Hello everybody and it is me Chris and today oh firstly I want to thank everyone for over 500,000 views on the best fart video I have no idea it was gonna get this big it was just maybe for portfolio stuff but I'm so grateful thank you everybody so much and the only disclaimer I will make for the video is that this is not going to be a top 5 video this is gonna be in a different order, maybe something you've never seen before, and let's start the video. For our first dinosaur, we have Utah Raptor. This was a Dromaeosaurid that was bigger than the real and fictional version of the Velociraptor, reaching up to 1.8 meters tall. If that wasn't scary enough, this dinosaur had a 32 centimeter long sickle claw to pierce the throats of its prey. And if you are still not scared, imagine being hunted down by an entire pack of them. It was almost going to be named Utah Raptor Spielbergi, named after the famous director Steven Spielberg, as the team wanted to gain research fees for the excavation. However, there was no deal that was sealed and instead was named Utah Raptor Ostromesaurum. However, this did prove that Spielberg's raptors were almost accurate. One last thing, there is a fundraiser to uncover a potential heap of Utah Raptor specimens, five roughly I believe, and I would like to thank Dangerville for making me aware of this so I can spread this even further, and I recommend you go check them out, donate if you can, there are rewards, and if you want to get a little bit of something out of it, check it out. In the deserts of Utah, this Pokemon would sneak up on unsuspecting young prey and slit their throats with their long claws. Riptor is cute! And looking at its potential, it is a speedy attacker with 100 attack and 80 speed. Keen Eye can be a great counter for accuracy lowering moves or any opponent daring to use double team. Tough Claws can be a good ability to have as well if you'd rather have the extra power. But if you'd rather move first, Sand Rush has you covered as well, as long as you have a Sandstorm up or something with Sandstream. These Pokemon, if in a pack, can take down prey up to 10 times their size. They also summon sandstorms for cover. Meet Gashirodon, the evolved version of Riptor, bigger and badder than before. The artist took the liberty of actually sending me the intentions behind his designs, and I'll read them to you now. Overall, I tried to make a dry aesthetic, mostly with the color palette, but I also added the bone-like features for extra detail. The crest and the green accents on the body, especially on Riptor, were loosely based on a Native American slash tribal design, as there is a Native American population in Utah. I thought this added the overall desert aesthetic. Also, just in comparison, I wanted to make Riptor look kind of cute and Gashirodon look kind of terrifying. I did this by making the lines and features of Gashirodon more jagged and rough, as well as making them basically the size of a Drudigan. Also, Gashirodon's names are an anagram of Gash, meaning a large cut, and Arid, meaning dry. To evolve Riptor into this beast, you need to evolve it to level 30 while having it hold a Razor Claw. The only other Pokemon that evolves like this is Sneasel, when you want to evolve it into Weavile. However, Sneasel evolves during the night. As I kept saying, Gashirodon is bigger and badder. It is even more deadly of a speedy attacker with 130 attack and 90 speed, enabling it to outspeed a fair few Pokemon. The abilities Kenai and Tough Claws helps with the more offensive side of Gashirodon. However, if you would rather have Gashirodon speed even more Pokemon, Sand Rush enables it to double its speed in a sandstorm. Ground Flying type is a rare type, only applying to the Gligar line as well as Landorus. This artwork is made by Rio is okay, and I would like to thank him for doing these two Pokemon, I really do appreciate it. 
Also, a shout out to Muddy Mewtube for unintentionally making me aware of this artist. Next on the list, we have Power Sorolophus. And as many of you may guess, I am going to be talking about its crest as that is the most important feature in my opinion. This crest is either used to communicate with other members of their herd or to intimidate predators. In the mid-90s, scientists of New Mexico of Natural History and Science have recreated the sound of the crest. What they did is that they took a near-complete skull of a Passerolophus to a hospital in Albuquerque to carry out 350 computed tomography scans. The data they received from the CT was then used to create a virtual model of the skull and then applied virtual air pressure. And this was the noise they made. There are also other reconstructions of Parasaurolophus having a flap of skin behind the crest, most likely just to show off to mates or to intimidate rivals. This Pokemon communicates by making little toots. However, if it feels threatened, it creates a loud bellow to deafen predators. Like a lot of Pokemon you see on this list, this one is cute as well. I can't resist. The crest itself, I based it off the bassoon, which is an instrument that is the only thing I'm aware of that can actually replicate the sound of a Parasaurolophus. Also, based is slightly off Ducky from Lab Before Time, a classic which I've never seen. I named this Pokemon after Kevin Terrace, who discovered a young specimen at the age of 17. Kevryun is literally a fast special attacker. This Pokemon is able to use sound moves like Hyper Voice to go well with its Amplify ability, but also its normal typing. I also gave this thing an additional grass type because I wanted to give this thing more of an offensive diversity. However, the main thing going against this Pokemon is that it's very frail with those two defenses. With a massive windpipe like crest, this Pokemon creates sounds up to 160 decibels. Its tail can also create a loud boom when flicked. Meet Dawn Soon! The Pokemon inspired by Parasaurolophus. With this design, I was a bit worried about over designing it like Sir Trax, if that was over designed, but I don't know, I'll let you guys decide. The green and the grass typing of this Pokemon, I would say, is inspired by that Parasaurolophus from Dinosaur King, whatever that was called. And its crest, I based it off the larger instrument of the bassoon, the Contra Bassoon which has an even more diverse range of sounds and can go deeper, I believe. I'm not a musician. As the Pokedex states, I also based its tail off one of those metal sheets you usually have for thunder effects. Don't know if I still use nowadays. This Pokemon has a great ability to be a sweeper. It gains the stab from its normal typing, but also has the ability Amplify to even boost that stab move even more. So if you use Hyper Voice, the damage I estimate is to be 200-ish. This Pokemon is a glass cannon, a bit like Rampardos with 165 base attack, but with very low defenses. And Dawn Soon is a brilliant special attacker with 137 special attack and 98 speed. If you want this Pokemon to outspeed some more Pokemon, give us Pokemon Chlorophyll. It will do great to cover a lot of fire type Pokemon weaknesses as well as the ability to make use of the drought ability. I also gave this thing an attack stat that's decent just to have that versatility. This Pokemon is very frail however and can be countered by a lot of fire and fighting types. Infernape in particular that can outspeed it and hit it hard. Number 3 on our list we have the Ankylosaurus. 
The Ankylosaurus is literally a tank with bony plates and spikes for protection. It is said to even have armored eyelids. Interesting fact is these plates could have gone pink when blood rushed into them, likely to intimidate. It is also said to walk low to the ground to protect its soft underbelly. The most deadliest thing about this dinosaur, however, is its thick, meter-wide club at the end of its tail. Swing at predators with enough force to break bones. And I say this enough times, I still think Indominus should have died from that whack. These solitary Pokemon act very aggressively when in company. If two of them find themselves in the same area, they will fight for territorial dominance. This thing is cute like everything else, but not friendly, so don't cuddle this thing. And you shouldn't cuddle this Pokemon. Although it's a tank with 92 defense, it does have a higher attack, meaning that this thing hits harder. As a standard rule of a tank, this Pokemon has low speed, but it also has a low special defense stat, meaning that it cannot take many hits from an ice, grass or water type move. It would be foolish for anyone but the toughest to take on this Pokemon. With a powerful spiked club at the end of its tail, it can break the thickest of bones mercilessly. Yeah, so this is Magventress and once again someone else has sent me the intention behind the design, well designs of both Pokemon. So let's see what they said. They have short legs so their bellies are close to the ground like a real Ankylosaurus. Also chose red colouring because they would flush blood into the plates. They have a lot of spikes for defence and the tails are based off a of mace with spikes on them so to inflict a lot of damage. The stripes on the back define the armour plates all along the back and on the tail. Well, Ben this thing being pink. Like Barnus, Magventus has a high attack and defence although its attack is greater. So, I doubt many people want to cuddle this thing, but if you do, don't. Unlike Barnus, however, this Pokemon has a more decent special defense, which makes it better as a mixed wall. The ground dark typing, I believe, is a bit mixed. While it gains the immunity to psychic and electro type moves, it is weak to six types, water, ice, grass, fighting, bug, and fairy. However, it does have four resistances as well, which it will show up here. The ability Battle Armor and Stamina is great for a more tanky role, but if you'd rather have a more tanky Crocodile, then you would have Moxie. And this person took the liberty of making shiny Pokemon as well. And they look a lot like bees. By the way, help the bees. These two Pokemon were made by Louise, and I would like to thank her so much for making these for the video. I very much appreciate it. The second to last dinosaur on our list is Troodon. Although it is a small version of a Utoraptor, it is possibly the smartest dinosaur ever discovered, although only as smart as a dog or chicken. As well as its large brain, it is also said to have large eyes to help it hunt at night, giving it detailed vision. There are larger relatives of Troodon in Alaska due to less predators around that area. Being up to 4 meters long, they would have had feathers to protect themselves from the cold. This Pokemon nestles up in trees looking vulnerable, but then attacks when any bird Pokemon gets close. Scary. This is Hunter Hunter O. Yeah, it's a little bit hard saying Hunter O when it's actually Hunter O. And this Pokemon is very colourful, likely to be based off tropical birds. Although it's not a bird, it is a dinosaur, looking a bit like a bird. Anyways, this Pokemon is quite a character. It has keen eye to help the Pokemon ensure its hits will actually hit, and it also has Frisk, which is very situational in my opinion. However, if you want a bit more of a kick, Strong Jaw is great with any biting moves like Crunch and Fang moves. For a quite a, well, let's say young dinosaur, it's very fast and quite powerful with those um, attack and speed stats. This Pokemon abandoned living in the trees to become a fearsome night hunter. It also prunes its feathers to look its best. This is Trogon, looking more like a dinosaur compared to its pre-evolution but it still retains that tropical look. 
I wouldn't say it's anything too new, except it's faster and more powerful. But this Pokemon does gain a Steel Typing, which is brilliant because it gives it an immunity to Poison type moves, as well as so many resistances. This Pokemon is one of the most cunning. It uses its agility and camouflage to confuse and tie its prey until it cannot defend itself. It also uses its bright plumage to scare off any predators. This is Runodon, the most colourful and intelligent of the Trirodon line. And because it looks very colourful, with that additional red, it looks more like a Macaw. The Scarlet one, I believe. And this Pokemon has become a beast. Its abilities have shifted around a bit, and it gains the new hidden ability Fleeting Jaw, which really aids it as a fast sweeper. And this is backed up by its great speed and attack stats, making this Pokemon a formidable foe, or a formidable tool. The artist also took the liberty of making a new move called Gale Fang, which boosted up by Fleeting Jaw, it can go through moves such as Protect and Detect, while also disabling those moves for 5 turns. And Rundodon doesn't get affected by Baneful Bunker or Spiky Shield when it gets poisoned or damaged. However, Rundodon is very frail and it can easily get taken out by anything bulkier that can return the damage even greater. Pokemon such as Slacking and Metagross would be great counters. Also, this Pokemon can be vulnerable to anything faster than it, such as Talonflame and Mega Lucario. Despite having a ton more followers than me on Twitter, I would like to thank Mosby for designing these three Pokemon for me. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. The final dinosaur on the list is probably the most terrifying. Carnotaurus. <laughs> which has the name of Flesh Eating Bull, which makes it sound like a reptilian version of a Minosaur. It is said that their horns were most likely for show, made as a shelf to their mates or to intimidate rivals. However, some others say that they could have been used as defense against rivals. Unlike most theropods, this dinosaur is definitely not feathered because they actually found skin impressions which may mean that it was very scaly. This dinosaur can run up to speeds of 30 miles per hour, but it can only run straight as it needs to stiffen up to actually run at such speeds. It would fall over if it tries to make any sharp turns. And the most craziest feature, which I found out on Dangerville, is that it had a kinetic skull, meaning that it could open its jaw wider than any other theropod. Possibly like snakes do today, but not as extreme. During a fight, this Pokemon heats the stones ranged on its body up to 1200 degrees Celsius, and charges at its enemies at 30 miles per hour. While running, it releases volcanic ash from its feet. Volcanotaurus. This is a beast. Quite, I do not really much to say about it really. And fortunately, the artist told me what inspired them, so I'm just going to read the quote out. I got a little inspired by the last Jurassic World for this design by making a reference to the volcano scene with the Carnotaurus. So that's why this design is based off volcano. Does sound deadly. And this Pokemon does look deadly. Yeah, not a bad reference. I mean, Fallen Kingdom, I think it wasn't a bad film when I saw it. And it's nice to see a Pokemon reference to that. In its more defensive state, it fills the world as a tank with 112 defense and 110 special defense. And it has a mild attack stat and speed, but because it's a pure rock type, it will be great offensively against bug, flying, ice, and fire types, but it is weak to water, fighting, grass, ground, and steel types, and it only resists four types. So this Pokemon would literally not do so well as a tank. If this Pokemon is knocked down below 50% of its health, that is when its ability becomes active. And Volcanotaurus explodes into a fiery Pokemon. Literally. So, this is where things get a bit more interesting. This Pokemon gains a new fire typing, helping it against grass and steel type moves, while also taking on more Pokemon types. Rest in peace, Vanillux. 
rest in peace little ice cream. It becomes more of a sweeper with 120 speed and 102 attack. It also has a 90 special attack which gives it some diversity in moves, as well as supporting its some of its fire type moves. Unfortunately this Pokemon has a quad weakness to ground and water type moves, which makes it vulnerable to an Aqua Jet or an Earthquake from an Aerodactyl. There is a Pokemon that is very similar to Volcanosaurus, and that is Minior. Firstly, Minior has a lower base stat of 440 when its shields are up, but when its shields are down, it increases to 500. Compared to Volcanotaurus, it's consistent of 480. Minior has a lot more weaknesses, but Volcanotaurus has a massive weak spot of water and ground type moves, as I said before, whereas Minior has none. Minior can work as a mixed sweeper. You can choose what you want it to be, and it will fill that role. Unfortunately, Volcanotaurus is a physical attacker. Who's better, Minior or Volcanotaurus? Comments below. Thank you to Arkenia68 for doing this piece, I really appreciate it. And the fact that she's all fancy, I believe. You know, I'm glad she coached my strange, very alienated version of English. Thank you everybody for watching this video, I really do appreciate it. I do apologise for the delay because of trying to get that perfect recording environment. But if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you want to share it with your friends, which I really would appreciate, please share it. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe. And I'm aiming for 1000 subscribers so I could make some money from this. But I'm not trying to be cash grabby, I just want to try and make a living on here. Like a lot of other people, but please, that'd be helpful. I would also like to thank the artists Rio's OK, Snaggle Claws, Arkenia68, and Mosby. I do apologize if I pronounce those names incorrect, but I would like to thank you, thank you all so much for doing the Pokemon designs and also helping with the information as well. And just thank you to everyone else who helped in the video too. But here's the juicy stuff. If any of you artists would like to take part in the next video, please comment below on this video, contact me by email or on one of my social media platforms. And my next question, what dinosaurs would you like to see next in the next episode of Pokesaur? Please let me know. And follow me on social media, I do hold some polls, I post some of my artwork, please just check out, check them out. I will appreciate it. In the past, present, or even future, I will see you there. Goodbye!